Hello and welcome to End to End, the podcast where we talk about all things pony and some things not. I'm your host, Duhod. Joining me today are Cabral095, head uh, of Muffin Love Production. Hola. Lightning Rabbit, director of AR and Delta Presents. Good day. Wait, there's no Presents in there. Anyway. Well, there is okay, now. There is it now. is now. And Joel Links, the gothic hippie, head of the Artist Alley. Hello, every pony. Don't pay attention to him. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Gentlemen, we have reached the end of season three. Last time we talked about the finale itself. What about the rest of the season? Uh, well, stuff happened. There were explosions. There were more explosions. Running around. Lots of running. Ooh, lots and lots of running. More songs, which were very enjoyable. Keen Mark Crusaders do stuff. Spike does stuff. Was his own episodes. And then Rapplejack gets a song. And we get a character who can only say, Crystals. That's true. Well, well uh, speak, speaking of uh, um, the great and powerful Sombra, I think that uh, King Sombra had a lot of uh, people waiting for him to be the big bad guy that we were promised dur- during our long wait for season three. But I think that they could have done a little more with him. Oh, but yeah. I don't know if he they don't they have an idea of ha- having him come back. Well, there was that anything. whole horn flying across the screen issue that. Every that's what that's person... what I fi- think. I think he's going to come back, and I think it'd be cool if there was like a fight between him and Discord. And I was they had, say like, Twilight because epic... she's a princess now, and then she loses terribly, well, he... and then Discord laughs, and then Celestia the laughs. Twilight princess. Ha, 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 ha. That seems horribly unlikely. Yeah, I, I think. We're delving and then, into well, too much. And then Twilight the pr- Princess gets saved by Link because Link. Twilight Princess. Twilight You're princess. my hero. Oh, well, excuse me, Princess. Anyway, oh, right, well, sorry. Okay. Quotes. Okay, no, sorry. Point is, um, that actually seems horribly unlikely. Um, I do think we were all kind of expecting Sombra to come back considering the whole setup with his horn. Uh, his horn getting blown off and flying off into the camera. Yes. And we and actually... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and we established before that his horn in itself can spread evil yep. shadow darkness. I was just going to mention that because yeah. his horn flew away. We know that it can create more dark crystals of power, causing his power to increase, I guess. It was never really defined what it did for him. That is a good point. But the point is that, you know, because his uh, horn got blown off, it sort of implied that he might have survived and was probably going to come back as the. He's like antagonist. Majin Buu. I, I, um, yes, I suppose so. I didn't yes. actually watch that show. What? Um, anyway, oh point God. is that um, it was sort of implied, at least you know, we implied for, uh, uh, from it that uh, he was going to come back as the season three main villain uh, at the end which obviously he wasn't, which was sort of a shame because it meant that the chance to flesh him out more as a villain uh, was, was lost. lost. So we end yeah. up with a very flat villain in a show that's normally very good with its villains. Crystalis being a good example of that, but we're not on season two. No, we're not. Yeah. Though you, could, yeah, though I would actually point out that since you bring up Chrysalis, and apparently the next arc will be dealing with Nightmare Moon, I would not be surprised if the comics actually deal with uh, Sombra and you know, flesh him out more as a villain or deal with the horn if the main yeah. show does not. Cause the Excuse comics me, special... what about Nightmare Moon? I was going to say, what was this about Nightmare Moon? Oh yeah, Nightmare Moon's coming back as the main villain of the second arc of the uh, IW, uh, IDW comics. Really? Oh, not... I love I the IDW say, comics. The second I was like, yeah, hang on, what? You were thinking yeah, no, more of the comics, uh, okay. Uh, Cry- Chrysalis this, was the villain. Luna gets more arc. lines? <laughs> uh, actually, apparently, it might not be Luna. What? Oh. Nyx? Sort of, Nyx? Bum, no, bum, bum. No, God, no. I, I don't think it's going to be Nyx. I, I think the idea is it's kind of going with the idea that uh, <laughs> Nightmare Moon is essentially like a spear that can infect, like that, uh, you know, took hold of Luna, Luna. and is sort of hump, uh, jumping from host to host. The host, the host, the host, the mm. host. It's like a symbiote. A I don't know the details yet. All I know it's is... It's Venom! It's Venom! It's Venom. Anyway, point is, I'm sure if Sombra doesn't get, uh, you know, the love he deserves in the second part of the Season 3 finale at the beginning of Season 4, we will not have seen the end of him. More Even than so, likely. 
fairly uh, disappointing original villain for uh, the first season for the uh, season three intro. Yes. But um, speaking of the season three intro, I personally did enjoy it. Actually, I watched it the first time, didn't care for it, but I rewatched it recently with my sister and my ten year old cousin Kylie because she wanted to watch it. And Kayla had my sister actually had not she seen every episode of season three up until I think it was uh, Keep Calm and Flutter on, except for episode one and two. <laughs> anyway, we watched those. I re, as I rewatched them, I'm like this is a bit more epic than I remember it being. It's not. It's definitely not Cancel Lot Wedding, but I did enjoy the season opening. It served well, despite the antagonist in it. He did a good job having a bit of a dark mood to it, but that was about it. Yeah, having a bit I mean, of a darkness yeah. to it. That yeah. was about all he did, though. He was a decent presence. Yeah, it was good. For, it was a good presence, definitely, but uh, he didn't have much character. All That's he said was now. crystals. Yeah. Is, I believe I he had a bit more oh, of his character than that. Sorry. No other character no, would be known for a single <laughs> line other than muffin. I uh, sorry, Lightning. I was actually literally just trying to say um, you, you should uh, you should say what you were going to say because I, I interrupted you to try and tell you to not get interrupted. Yeah, brilliant. I, I think it should be pointed out to our listening audience that as of right now, uh, Lightning Rabbit has just woken up, and the rest of us are all very early in the morning. Actually, it's only midnight for me. Okay, well, everyone oh, except really? for Cabral, who is a massive jerk, and like yes. just woke up. It is, is my inner yeah. rainbow dash. AR never stops talking. No, I don't. It's my inner pinky nope. guy. You've you got an inner everything. I have an inner <laughs> everything. I have an inner organ. You know, I suppose that's true, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't see anything that's not true about that. <laughs> right. <laughs> I also thought it was nice to see some kind of closure with the great and powerful Trixie. Yeah, that was good. That happened. Yeah, that was... Actually, this brings up an interesting point. What are people's opinions in this uh, little group about Trixie? Both before and after the uh, Season 3 uh, Reformation. She tripped and fell. I laughed my head off. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't quite answer the question, but it. I oh. think um, I think that she was kind. She's still kind of an arrogant bitch. Still, even oh, with so the sassy. whole redeeming factor, but at, at she she uh, recognized that she did something stupid, and uh, she's still narcissistic. And uh, maybe we haven't seen the last of her. The last. But, I I f- think it was a nice little closure we had with uh, the uh, show pony. Yeah, uh, that, uh, it was again. nice. And also, that episode made Rule sixty three canon. <laughs> Damn it! Oh, yes, <laughs> Lightning was going to bring right that up. There. The one point he had of the episode, <laughs> I was going to bring that up. No, I wasn't going to bring it up. But now that it has been brought up, you can't bring it up. Well, yeah, well, let, Lightning can bring up whatever he wants. Is his uh, 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 I thought of something then. wrong when you said that. I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> All right then. Oh, anyway, lightning. Um, what was your opinion of Trixie before and after? Well, in the uh, Showstoppers episode, I didn't particularly like her. I character design wise, because artist and stuff, I quite liked the actual design of the character, but her personality, it her annoyed personality me. Because people fly. in real life... Exactly. But, like, people in real life who are really arrogant and narcissistic, like, do get on my nerves a little bit. And so she was the embodiment of that in blue pony form. Blue pony form. So I'm glad that she kind of saw the error of her ways, but she's still basically just as kind of narcissistic as she was <laughs> she's just the great and apologetic Trixie now yes She'll always... I want to know how Pinkie Pie was breathing for that whole f- ordeal her ears silly as long as there's a hole into her <laughs> head she can breathe I okay <laughs> that's um well, well assume <laughs> for the time being that that's how biology works yeah <laughs> it's Pinkie Pie I know I study botany oh lord anyway good um, <laughs> 
uh, Lightning, you actually do bring up an interesting point there. And I should point out that uh, while I didn't credit you as that, you are a vector artist and a rather talented one at that. Um, no. So, yeah, for those listening who were confused as your uh, you know, little comment about being an artist, that is what you were referring to. But yet, yes. the actual the design, the color schema, especially the blue and white, that is actually a really nice look. You know, mm. there's a, I would not... I mean, I'm not an artist at all, um, but I would not have thought that, uh, you know, light blue and white would have looked actually so well oh, it, uh, it, contrasted it against light each other. Light blue and white work well for a lot yeah. of things. That's why you see, um, if you look at some older cars, a lot of them are light blue with white interiors for quite a few of them. And it works very well. They are very good complementary colors. Yeah. It's just a the show race wasted on such a horrible pony. Trixie <laughs> is fashionably correct. Oh, my, yes. Um, Cabral. What? For the most talkative member of our uh, little group, you've been the quietest on the point of Trixie. Uh, yes, well done. Because, I don't, I don't know, I'm indifferent towards Trixie. I mean, I knew some people who bragged and showed off, mostly me, uh, about stuff. <laughs> so, I don't know, I have neutral feelings towards Trixie. I'm neutral about a lot of things in general. I don't know why, I just am. I'm someone to say, good for you! Moving on. Um, it's kind of me. I do like to talk a lot. I did like when Trixie tripped and fell. Um, it was a nice redeeming quality she had. I enjoyed seeing the um, revenge cycle go through Trixie because I didn't think on a show like My Little Pony they would have a revenge cycle for a character that was as in-depth as Trixie had because she went and... Uh, first off, where did she get all those bits? Um, the endless hours of work she put in at the rock farm, which Clearly. apparently really paid well, because yeah. you know, she had a huge sack of money. That was a huge sack of money. This is too fu- too powerful. Would you like that gift wrapped? Anyway, <laughs> yes. um, Sell I out. did enjoy that dark scene. My sister was watching this. She's like, "Is this?" She said, "Wait, is this fan made?" I'm like, "No." She's like, "What?" Anyway, because it had a nice dark, eerie feel at the beginning of this episode, and I enjoyed that. Um, like I said, I also enjoyed the revenge factor. That was a very nice touch. The alicorn amulet. First mentioned the fan-made word alicorn, which we talked about a lot. And by a lot, I mean like five minutes in the first episode. <laughs> if you listen to that one, I'm so sorry that you're listening to we'll this We'll put one annotations too. to go back to that one because we're all high tech. Oh, yes. Wait, what? what? Annotations? We are living in the future. I'm actually living in the past. Yes. Basically. Which is true. You're you're we're living in America. No, no, we're not. Anyway, well, um, it's a lightning rod, isn't it? Anyway, right? well, no. But anyway, no, I don't. Um, anyways, oh, yeah. back to what I what, what was I saying? Anyway, um, <laughs> I think we were about Trixie, saying. but I think we got a little bit sidetracked. Well, yeah, sack of bits of revenge, alicorn amulet, and I did like the. Um, transformation spells that they use. It was very nice to see the duels going on, how that worked. I do like uh, Trixie's distrust of wheels. I feel the same way. Um, it was a, it, it was an enjoyable episode. I did like Zakur's comeback, where she was actually able to become a Yoda of the episode and help Twilight out with her saga. So training. many Star Wars references. And by so many, they mean references. like three or four. Which also the Wilhelm scream is in that episode. Which yeah, I, yeah, I saw that. You heard that. You can't see, I you like can't see the Wilhelm five, scream uh, lightning. Five well, stars. I saw the part in the episode where it happened. Okay. Uh, Joel, you were trying to say something there? Uh, I, I counted like five or six uh, Star Wars references in uh, that episode. I'm like, oh my god, that's so awesome. <laughs> yes, there were quite a few, but overall, um, good episode. I enjoyed it. Yeah, point I actually just thought of right now. Uh, was this... Zakora's only you know episode with a strong focus on her. I mean, she had. I mean, not in uh, the overall series, obviously, but in season three, I think she's in like two episodes. Just this for sidekicks. And, yeah, her, for her that brief, and to take a uh, spikes gem. Yeah, exa- exactly. She's a, she has a very brief bit in just for sidekicks, um, and then this episode. <laughs> And she didn't even help out much. I mean, she said, allow me to help you take your pain away, and then something that rhymes with away, and then she, like, took a gem and gave it to a, uh, girl, a Philly Girl Scout sort of equestria adorable. thingy. Which adorable. yes. And I'm like, I thought she was, like, going to help Spike get untied after he paid her or something, and then she just left him. 
I'm like, well, I think that was bribery that went on in the episode. It was like, <laughs> I'll help you if you pay me. And then just leaves what? him tied to the tree. <laughs> yes. Like, well, there was actually a lot of bribery in that episode. Um, well, of course. It, 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 yeah. The thing is, like, for a kid's show... Little Pony, bribery is magic. True, but the thing is... Like, black market thing. The black market. Yeah. There's a lot in there about uh, economics. Uh, you know, the fact that they had an entire episode pretty much just based around the value of various gems, paying people off, uh, actually, you know, focus on paying for products and stuff. I mean, the thing is, it was actually, for an episode about a guy taking care of a bunch of pets, it was probably the most, uh, you know, finance-focused episode of the series. Oh, yeah. And, you know, that's not just a hand-wavy, you know, Whatever. There's no episodes there about finance. Like it was, it was actually about the you know relative economics of the universe. Exactly. But also, really so cool. that little tiny itty bitty gem got them an industrial size hair dryer. <laughs> to be fair, I thought that was weird until you think about what you think of one thing. You can either see the fact that Rarity toss Spike a tiny little red gem as being you know lol element of generosity. No. Or as Rarity basically being like, you know what? I'm going to be super generous and give you this ridiculously valuable little gem. And Spike just totally missing the point of that and giving the key market crusaders oh, his most valuable. That is a ruby sapphire, madam. And what do you want to buy yeah. with this? We want to buy that industrial size hairdryer. <laughs> yeah, it's all amazing. Anyway. See, that's what I'm thinking. Like, normally, if it's smaller, that means that it's rarer. So it could have been, actually. I never thought about it like that, but it well, could yeah, have been. Well, yeah, it's kind of like with gold. The smaller the piece of gold, the harder it is. And then the larger piece of gold, the well, softer it is. The, but it's uh, more valuable when it's harder instead of soft, more of. It has to do with the um, the quality. The quality the and purity as well. That has gold, to do yeah. with stuff, too. You know, how much of it is... Because uh, you, know, you, you almost never get pure gold, and you almost never get uh, you know perfect gems, You know, especially not very rare gems. So if you assume that rubies are just, for whatever reason, extraordinarily rare, and that was an extremely finely cut ruby, uh, yeah, it actually makes sense that not only is it something that could buy a rather large uh, you know, device like that, maybe a little bit of a stretch, but, you know, that, it's, it's a good show. Yeah, but that and also, I mean, they, for one, Spike was able to pay with any kind of uh, gem to anyone, because gems are worth something, obviously. Because they're one common, they use them as a form of currency, but they also use bits as a form of currency as well. And it's interesting to see the two differences between that. Because Spike basically paid everyone a gem, and it's instantly worth something, uh, no matter how large it is. Really, I mean, he paid the train conductor guy uh, a certain gem, and as long as he had a gem, I'm sure he could have gotten on the train. It doesn't matter what kind of gem it was. Uh, whereas maybe it costs a certain amount of bits or something. So I just find that interesting. Yeah, also the fact that pretty much everyone in the town is willing to gouge the poor little guy like crazy because, I mean, they don't give him any sort of, you know, change for the gems he's handing out. It's just sort of like, you yeah. know what? <laughs> Granny Smith is just like, I am disapproving of your attitude. Okay, I will take this enormous gem of yours and leave. Or the train conductor is just like, yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah. No change. Yeah, I'll take that. No mm. change. But how do you get change? I no one likes you. Right, okay. How do you give well, like change? Yeah, for a yeah, movie. Yeah, I was gonna say, how do you give change like, right here? Yeah. Let me get, let me get my hammer and chisel. I'll be right back. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, like you, you give the person a handful of bits. I mean, you're obviously not gonna pay them. The yeah. Full, sorry, the full amount because you're it's you. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you have uh, the inconvenience of having to exchange that for proper money. Like, I mean, if someone came into a store I was working at and was like, "Here, I'd like to buy uh, this candy bar. I'll pay you a gold coin." It would be really hard for me to eyeball it and just go like, okay, here's the exact change. And then converting that gold into usable money would actually yeah. be kind and of also, pain. It's, but... it's, uh, it's kind of like way back when during the gold rush era, they would pay with gold nuggets for stuff. Mm. And it was just paid for that way. They couldn't give them change from gold nuggets, really. Yeah, but the thing is, like, if someone did give you a gem in real life, you know, Assuming you had to take it for whatever reason, you you know decided like oh yeah you know I'm taking this gem. You would at least give them some money. I mean you open your wallet and try and I, I, you know at the very least give I, them, like, I have some gems in my wallet. Or I go. Some... Yeah. Of course. <laughs> well, of course. I mean it's the only way to be sure. 
But uh, yeah. I think we spent enough time on the gems and finances and currency in Equestria. Let's go back to the, mm-hmm. the beginning of the episode. The very uh, third episode, Feeling Peaky Keen, one of the uh, more expected episodes because it wasn't the premiere opening. The premiere openings are so different from the regular episodes in the season, so a lot of people were curious as to how this would go, especially when we saw the uh, preview the first time. Yes. To be fair, yeah, it is a... Uh... Feeling Pinky Keen was a really uh, wait a second. wait what no Feeling wait, Pinky Keen feeling... wasn't the third episode that was yeah. too many Pinky Pies oh sorry too many Pinky Pies yeah. way, Pinky, Pinky was, was like the first season yeah that was that was the one with uh, Pinky Pies which by the way that uh, is still my favorite episode of all time Feeling Pinky Keen but um anyways back to too many Pinky Pies I I meant just replace what I said earlier with too many Pinky Pies right yeah, it's, too but, uh, now. it's too late yeah, now it's too late now you're too late, late. But it's point is that uh, Too Many Pinkie Pies was actually a really fun episode. I enjoyed it, at least. Um, it was kind of weird. <laughs> it was very strange with the, uh, the the army of clones. They got uh, the wrong and... Pinkie Pie in actuality. Yeah, that... Oh, God, that meme. That meme about Pinky, the real Pinky being trapped forever in the ocean while the imposter took over her life. That's mm-hmm. freaky! That's really freaky. Yeah, it would be if that actually yeah, happened to not... you. Imagine if there was a different me taking over as me, but you couldn't tell. Oh, well, the world would be in utter chaos. I, I think it's less likely to happen in this world, though. Just saying. There was a yeah. guy with a shirt that said, this is my clone. I kind of want one now. Yeah, okay. Anyway. To be fair. Anyway. Anyway. Um, but yeah, it was... Like I said, though, it's like a kind of a highly expected episode, sort of, because it is representing what the filler of the season will be. Because the premieres are always, well, the premieres, they are very significant points in the overall story, in a sense, compared to the filler episodes, where they're just little adventures underneath the story arc going on. Yeah, the uh, the meta episodes versus the, well, for lack of, see, the, 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 the term I'd usually use for these are the... Uh, the term that used to get used for the X Files or Buffy or other shows like that, and that's meta episodes and oh, sorry, plot episodes and Monster of the Week episodes. And it's basically the day to day stuff that doesn't actually necessarily tie into the overall story versus the episodes that actually you have to watch in order to get the overall narrative. Yeah, that's the problem with Doctor Who. You have to like see every episode to understand it. Yeah, because it's a massive story arc. True, though to be fair with Doctor Who, you also do sometimes get sort of a thing where you'll have Monster of the Week episodes versus, uh, you know, meta plot episodes, since there will be episodes that just don't really tie into the overall story, and they're just sort of fun. Yeah, yeah been but a there's few always like those that. hints in there. Oh, yeah, but they'll have a few that you have to watch if you want to get the overall narrative, and uh, the idea of separating things into meta and uh, filler episodes is kind of so, once it's come out, when someone goes back and they're like, okay... I need you to really quick catch up on the series. Here are the six episodes you need to watch from this season, the four you need to watch in this season, and the ten you need to watch in this season. Yeah. Um, the, the thing with MLP, though, is that it's kind of hard to do that since in any given season, there'll be at most, like, somewhere between three... Actually, it's always been uh, three or four. Uh, season one had... actually. Actually, you know what? No, never mind. It, season one, there's only one st- you know, serious meta plot episode. Uh, no. Huh. Okay. No, the Grand Gallop of Gala was an overall theme throughout. It, it was, but the thing is, technically, you wouldn't... Okay, if you want to count the Gallop and ga- the, the, ga- the, 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 the Gala as <laughs> an important part of the meta plot, that means that the episodes you have to watch to get that season are one, two, three, because three is Ticket Master, which ties into Gala, uh, Suit yeah. for Success, because it's the dresses... Uh, yeah. The Ghostbusters was that season one or two? One. Okay, one. So Ghostbusters yeah. because it ties into season three. That was episode, Ghostbusters episode six. That was okay, yeah. Episode. so yeah, that, that that ties into season three. So you have to watch that, and then Gala because Gala. Uh, then you go over into uh, season two. Season you have to watch, two, of course, one, one and two. two obviously, uh, you have to watch Luna Eclipse because that ties in with uh, the change in the design for Luna. Lesson Zero is another good episode to go over as well because you really get Twilight's personality as it at its breaking point. True, though technically, really you, technically you don't actually have to see that in you order to get the rest to. of the season. 
it's a strongly recommended episode, but it isn't necessarily a meta plot. You have to watch this to understand. Well, story. that's incorrect. And oh. uh, let me just say, um, no. because at, that that's the one that starred show, showing that uh, from now on, uh, everyone has to send Celestia Lair, not just Twilight Sparkle. Exactly. Oh, that was oh actually, yeah, well. I never wow. thought about that. That was really dumb of me. Yes, thank you, Joel. I, 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 <laughs> no you, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why I said you had this. Yeah. So yeah, okay. Plus, Twilight's what? just hysterical in it. Yeah, it also just an episode. I really of like her, me. And Sweetie Belle, you are best DMC. Sorry. Anyway, she is. Yeah, so but one, Creepy Belle is best. Three. His best. Uh, Moving on. Anyway, that one, see. yeah. So one, two, and three, you have to watch. You have to watch Luna Eclipse because it reintroduces Luna, and you have to watch the wedding. I yeah. think that's about it. And then for season three, you have to watch episodes one and two again. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you have to watch episode um, uh, whatever uh, it is. The, really the, uh, the the Trixie one. Yeah. Well, you one bad watch... apple as well. I think you'd watch that. Oh, yeah, because yeah. it introduces a whole new character. One bad apple, Trixie, and you have to watch Sleepers in Ponyville because it is a Scootaloo episode. You do not get any other CMC. Uh, she's the only CMC yet to have an episode, and she gets one now. True. To be fair, again, not meta necessary, but strongly recommended. Yeah, it's for the side story with the CMC themselves. Yeah, yeah. but you, what you need to do in order to understand the series later on is one, two... Uh, I just know, say watch ep- all the episodes. Well, yes, you you should watch all the episodes. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, if you were like, okay, gun to my head, you have to watch these episodes in order to get season four when it comes. <laughs> Who the hell puts a gun to your head? I want you to watch these episodes, My Little Pony. <laughs> what? Oh, I'll shoot you in the head for not Some watching My Little Pony. Yes, absolute maniac. <laughs> get in the van. <laughs> it's that guy. That's a insane brony you got there. I know, right? To be fair, none of you live in Maine. Every uh, couple of days, someone just comes up and uh, asks me to do something. I have a for question. Them. Is it like every Stephen King crappy uh, TV show? I mean, it is like every Stephen King book. Just everyone around here is a psychotic killer who, wait, at the slightest serious? provocation, yeah. Seriously, Maine is Maine is literally just like a Stephen King novel in that everyone you meet is a psychopath who is just either, like, this close to snapping or this close to getting murdered by someone else. That's because they're out of their minds of boredom. There's nothing to do up there. You know, I resent that. Except become a dr- drunk and a writer. <laughs> yeah, murdering people Not is always an option up there. Plot. What was that? What was that, Joel? Uh, it was just one of those Stephen King uh, archetypes where there's always, like, the drunken writer or the abusive... Uh, uh, husband. See, uh, see, see, you, you, you're saying words, but all I'm hearing is, please, please do, Hod, punch me for insulting Maine's favorite son. <laughs> 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 but uh, but also, I mean, it, even with Maine, there's just, like no mentions of it. If you go to, um, I'm all the way in California, and you're in Maine, and it's not even on the map for the weather. I mean, I don't even see past Texas. Well, that's that's great. I'm glad it's, I Maine is like that state that everyone forgets about. They're like, there's a state called Maine. I'm like, yeah. by the way, when we're finished insulting Maine, oh, I didn't want to bring up another point. No, I'm joking. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Go ahead. I think we're about done insulting. Oh yeah, Maine. this was about ponies, wasn't it? <laughs> Not really. Sorry, no. I completely forgot. No. Um. See, what were we talking about just now? Before uh, Maine. Uh, CMC and then overall meta arcs, which episodes you need to watch, and some guy holding you at gunpoint to watch these episodes. That was it, yeah. The whole idea of having a separate story for the CMC is quite nice, like having a sub-storyline. Yeah, it's a, a, a parallel storyline. Because it's one of those things where you're like, I can't stand the main characters for so long. I mean... You do need those slight breaks. I mean, there, 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 there's a lot of shows that do that. They'll take away uh, the main characters for a little bit and bring out some side characters that you will just love and enjoy. Yeah, it's um, nice. By, by the way, just um, for the record, once again, I'm not going to ask all of you, is there anyone here who is not a CMC fan? No? Mm-hmm. We all love okay. the CMC. I think okay, there's yeah. someone we, in the we, audience yeah, just I, said Sweetie Bell is best. Sweetie Bell is Sweetie Bell is best. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, because I do know that there's a rather sizable uh, hate dumb for the, uh, the there CMC. Is? 
There it is. is. I yeah. I don't. Well, okay. I don't think it's been as strong since. I'll agree like, that they're one, kind but... of stupid, but it's because they're kids and they do stupid things. They're yeah. gonna skydive off a bridge. It's just adorable. I mean, seriously. They are, they are seriously cute, but yeah. Mm. Now the uh, the thing is. There is a lot of people who really don't like them. They kind of think they're they've got the Jar Jar effect going on of uh, you know, or they're they're just, they're the scrappy dudes of the series. I disagree, and I, I don't do. think that uh, most people have. I think that's kind of died off a lot since uh, seasons two and three have fleshed out their characters a lot more. Yeah, it has. I um, yeah. assume. But yeah, no, I really like the CMC, and I'd love to see a CMC show yeah. or a C, uh, more CMC episodes. No, nope, we get Equestria Girls. No, yeah. oh, we talked about that last episode. But um, oh, also, uh, actually, I should, should have been here then. No, well. <laughs> oh, well, Bye. probably for the better. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Yeah, it was a very um, heated discussion. <laughs> um, actually, with the uh, CMC thing as well, it's not just a Jar Jar thing, because they're not there for entertainment. I mean, they have their own story as well, but it's not just that. They're at a focal, they're, they're covering a very significant topic in the My Little Pony universe, the cutie mark itself. Mm. Um, it's something that they're covering with the side ponies because I mean the main six already got them and you learn how they got them but now you're following these ponies in discovering their talent so it's a whole interesting little side story going on where it's still relevant to the whole plot of the My Little Pony universe because the cutie mark is what defines you it is what your ta- it is representative of what your talent is and they could um, have gotten it too if they would have done the talent show correctly they would have gotten into if it hadn't been for those meddling haters, but um, <laughs> but yeah, that works. But so uh, it, it's it's like that. It's essentially, someone add on to that at last mm-hmm. word. Uh, I no, will. Actually... Um... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no, lightning. Go ahead. All I was going to say was on a slight footnote. Um, I don't really think it's fair to compare the CMC to Scrappy Doo and Judge Binks because nobody likes those characters. <laughs> <laughs> like no oh. one likes those characters. I liked him when Jar Jar almost died. True. I, I'm <laughs> okay, saying it's more th- they call them that as opposed to yeah, yeah. they you know they are that. Um, I don't even know, recall are... that though because it's like they're in a well, completely well, yeah. different class. Well, to be fair, the idea is that they're the wannabe comic relief character. Like the idea is these are the characters that we feel are the wannabe comic <laughs> relief that yeah. don't work and were obviously designed for Kitty. Uh, you know. Appeal and fail. To so be fair here, right? yes. To be fair, Jar Jar was supposed to be, you know, for the kids, the racist, racist kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, uh, stupid Maine. The thing. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> all... Wow, you bring that knocking Maine. I know. <laughs> no, right, you, you, it was just in that timing. Anyways, you're the. Anyway, uh, okay, you, okay. Um... <laughs> So, uh, rage subsiding a little bit. Uh, right, the CMC. Uh, the thing is, the the thing that actually works really well with the CMC, and I think uh, one of the reasons why you know, they are really necessary for this show, is it allows the main characters to not be as young. Uh, oh, the CMC yeah, that's are, a really good point. Yeah, yeah, the CMC are the age de- are the age demographic, are the original age demographic. They are you know the little kids. Little girls who uh, would have been watching this show uh, as the target audience when uh, they were setting everything up, and they their episodes are generally about topics that are a little bit more uh, directly relevant to children. You know, growing up, dealing with uh, bullies. you know bullies and childhood icons, and you know Talent all these shows. little things. You know, yeah. all, all these things that are more relevant to children. Like obviously, all the episodes are relevant to kids. Uh, but they're more in sort of a here's a good lesson that you can apply to your life. Where the CMC literally do things that kids of this age group would be doing or could do be that, doing. Yeah. And what I really like about this is it allows the, the rest of the main cast to not be that young, because normally yeah. they'd have to be you know yeah. really little kids so that like, they could um, actually you know actually SpongeBob is a good example of that SpongeBob is an adult in the show. He is an adult, but it does not seem like it when you watch the show. Yes. Patrick and SpongeBob are both adults, though. Technically, yes, exactly. And really? the thing is... Okay. Well, yeah, they have jobs. SpongeBob yeah, owns have... his own home, and That's he has true, to yeah. pay rent and stuff like that as oh. well. To be fair, Patrick doesn't own his own home, and he lives under a rock, but... Yeah, I was going to say. 
to be very and with oh, that, yeah. uh, I I must leave. All right then. Well, it's been good to have you on the show, Joel. We look forward to having you next time. Yeah, yes. thank you uh, for the future. Joel. Let's schedule these a little earlier. Yeah. <laughs> That's more than fair. All right then. Adios. Adios. Goodbye. Goodbye. So. And now anyway. that he's gone. <laughs> now that he's gone, let's talk about all the crap that we hate about it. No, okay. Yes! No, but yeah. it, seriously, the uh, the thing about having uh, the CMC as kids, uh, yeah, I've already said this a couple of times, but because of that, we don't have to have the uh, the main characters as kids. And you said, you know, SpongeBob has adult characters. But to be fair, SpongeBob also doesn't really try and teach lessons or try to really be overly it teaches to so kids. many lessons rely on the magic conch and the- <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see here. Uh, uh, just from my just off the top of my head let's see we gotta rely on the magic conch uh don't bury the guy you think you've murdered until you <laughs> <the next day. laughs> uh, seriously, that was a that was a really surprisingly dark episode um and don't yeah. believe in ghost stories told by squidward yeah, the, the, the lessons are obviously not very applicable to kids, and they're kind of you know moral winking, uh, not to the audience, to the uh, you know parents watching with their kids, and that's part of why SpongeBob did really well. And you know that I, kind I of nod. So the, I enjoy you know, rewatching the old episodes. Yeah, but the, the thing is, that type of nod and wink at the audience—that's the type of thing that really allowed SpongeBob and Adventure Time and shows like that to you know kick it off with an adult audience. <sighs> Adventure Time. I know you don't like Adventure Time. I like Adventure Time, but it's all right. We have different tastes. Point is, it's and very California. popular, and it's very popular partly because it, you know, very much is as much for the older audience as it is for the younger audience. Mm-hmm. MLP isn't. MLP really, as much as it is, bleh, as much as it has attracted an older audience, it's done so pretty much just entirely on the strength of its writing and its characterization. It doesn't actually. Until, you know, like, arguably, it doesn't usually uh, pander to the older demographic. Uh, and so, since it does pander... episodes have started to do that a bit more, though. It has. They have. They have, to be fair. But they still... It isn't the focus of the show. They don't no, have, not. you know, no. jokes about cannibalism or jokes about murder, like, uh, you know... Go. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, which, to be fair, you do have in both SpongeBob and Adventure Time... Um, but in uh, you know LP, they don't do that. Uh, it's and like Disney, yes, and because they don't do that, they need to have you know they can't just go. All these characters are adults, but they're essentially man children. Yeah, you know, they're essentially too dumb to be considered really? actual thinking adults. Yeah. So the CMC really? fill that role really well and prevent our characters from becoming morons. True. Yeah, that's a good point. I would just quickly mention, though, man children probably isn't the correct word to use in the respect <laughs> the that they're all women. The one thing you're concerned with in all that. Yeah. Hey, I'm just saying well, that they are women, so it'd be like they've turned into men to become man children. Yes, that is how it's done now. I could go on for hours about like fan uh, fictions coming. That the male pronoun, that, uh, you know, the use of uh, male. Uh, I think we get the idea. Shall we move on now? Okay, I don't want to get into it really much. Anyway, that was our take on the CMC. Anyways, moving on, though. um, We covered Feeling Pinky Keen and did a good job setting up. Pinkie Pie being random was amazing. I loved her getting fingers. And my favorite You mean uh, too many Pinkie Pies. You said Feeling Pinky Keen again. Again! Son of my mother! Why? You really like that episode. I just keep misnaming it. (laughs) It's a subliminal thing. He can't get away from it. It's a subliminal thing. Anyway, um, although one of my favorite videos is still Pinkie Pie, when she look what I can do with my hooves. It shows the fingers come out. It's Lyra in the background. She looks at her hoof and starts crying. Oh, and Lyra. You that was my favorite it. video. For long one day. Time. One day. One day. Soon. Anyway. So, after that, we get the Bab Seed episode with the CMC, and as he has said, it is more, uh, what should we call it, where it's like children-related issues with bullies and such. Great song in this episode, by the way. Uh, love that so song. So catchy. It's so catchy, and more like, and it's also done differently than a lot of the other songs in the show. This is more like a, 
uh, a pony music video instead of you know just them walking around singing, crowds joining in. It's more done like a musical, uh, not a music, a PMB, a music video though. Right, it's a more musical. like a music video than a uh, than a musical, which most of the other ones are actually done the style of a musical. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. And yeah, it's it's a catchy song. Uh, I think I've listened to the uh, Living Tombstone remix of it more times than is healthy. Sure. Um, but yeah, it is a good episode. I know I read a lot of people. Uh, I actually read a fair number of reviews and uh, articles written up uh, by various people about these episodes. Uh, and there was a lot of negative feedback to this one episode. Um, a lot of people thought it was either too uh, too preachy or, you know, too uh, kind of realize, gloss. They do realize this is a show for little girls. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, like, they, they were kind of like, uh, it kind of feels like a 90s PSA with the ha! very... Mm. Yeah, or uh, saying the uh, the topic of bullying was handled badly. I know, like one person uh, who was doing a review for the Brown Stable uh, was complaining that as a kid who got you know as a person who was bullied as a kid, he kind of felt the message was not uh, put across well because it kind of implies all you have to do is just talk to someone, the problem goes away. But on the other hand, I got bullied a lot, and this episode pretty much was about how it, you know things got handled. Uh, yeah, and because I thought it, it, was, you know, it didn't I, imply I, that it would fix the problem right away. They just said talk to her about it. It, yeah. it didn't imply that it would fix the problem. And mm. it works. Talking to someone does help. It doesn't necessarily work as a you know silver bullet to the head, but it's it can work. Yeah, yeah. it can't be helpful. And the the little message about don't turn around and then just start, you know, trying to take revenge is also good yeah. because I did that. Did not mm. work well. Actually, tying in with the whole revenge thing, we should also mention that we don't condone using silver bullets to stop bullying. Yes. I, I, I recommend <laughs> lead bullets. Yes. Because Do while not... it will stop it, it doesn't make it any better. Because <laughs> while it will stop it... <laughs> let, me, let me point out, the way I dealt with my own bullying problem was with violence, and it was not a very good solution. It did not work in the long run. So don't do it, and don't use silver bullets, because bullies are not werewolves. I've yeah. never dealt with bullying personally, so I can't help you guys there. Yeah. Now, admittedly, if you are being bullied by a werewolf... Come uh, talk to me. Then, then silver bullets. But uh, make sure something's wrong with you. <laughs> Only in that one event can you use silver bullets. In that one very specific instance, use silver. Otherwise, okay. do not. Lead will be worth yeah. just. Otherwise, well. a regular bullet will do. I mean, no. I mean what? <laughs> no, no. I bet she tastes exotic. Anyway, inevitably, <laughs> um, someone is going to do something horrible and they're going to say yeah no it was uh, end to end they told me use the yes. all condoned by end to end who told me that shooting the bully would help I'm sure they're curious about her name oh well we're not going to tell you guys ha huh. yeah, you get to figure it out on your own I don't anyway, think I will. So what episode came next after that one we had the magic duel which we already covered I did like a lot of the magic tricks the core making reappearance was nice I did not know she used door stops um wait who used door stops doors is Cora. Oh, Zakora, yes. Yes. You're right. Yes, we had Magic Duel next. Actually, I think we already talked about Magic Duel at a uh, relative length. Love the yeah, wheel. Yeah, I did. But um, also, I was going to mention real quick with Magic Duel, uh, Beavers, they make a reappearance later on, but they are... They're pests. I mean, seriously. Throughout the series, they've been pests for the most part. They have. You know what? I'm going I'm to call it right now. Beavers in MLP are chaotic evil. That is but their... Leave It to Beaver is still a great show. Um, yes, I suppose so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, after that, I think it was... Um, sorry. Uh, was it, were we at Sleepless in Ponyville after Magic Duel? Yes, it was. I'm just saying that, I think until Spike at Your Service came out, that was my pick for best episode of the season. I really liked uh, Sleepless in Ponyville. Yes, because um, for one, Scootaloo finally got an episode, which this was originally going to be for in Season 2, but I believe most of you already know that who are listening to this. I don't know who's still into this at 45 minutes in, but I don't know, you're, you're insane. So, so are we. But, very good episode. I enjoyed the story, plus it is what everyone wanted. A Scootaloo bonding with Rainbow Dash, and 
it was just funny as well. Sweetie Belle was adorable in this episode. Yeah. Rarity loves camping. I despise camping. <laughs> I simply cannot understand why you'd want to go camping. <laughs> so, outdoors. I actually had to say, though, Nature. it was another episode. Oh, another good reason it was a good episode was because Luna appears. Oh, yes. And it kind of. Not just because Luna's amazing, but also it canonizes the fact that she can go inside people's dreams and she actually has a job. I love the yeah. comic where um, it was, um, it's Celeste, she's flying, there's a giant muffin flying towards her. It turns out to be Luna, wake up, my sister, you need to raise the sun. And Celestia <laughs> wakes up all mad. Oh god, yeah, no, I saw that, I saw Luna appear in there, I was just like, one, oh my god, Luna, yes. Luna. And then two, yeah. oh my god, Luna's Freddy Krueger. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> She, she can go into your dreams and hug you. And so, hug you. Not quite Freddy, but you know. Uh, uh, yeah, Freddy did something slightly different. We'll call way, it a special st- kind of hug. Otherwise, it's a bit stalkerish. Bit but, um... Yes, but no, it was an overall really solid episode. It was, you know, a really yeah. nice, uh, you know, development for Scootaloo. It was and a I great. I believe this was actually, um, it was, oh, who's, it who was, was someone's writer. first episode. Yeah, it was wrote. the. Uh, Someone's first episode. I, I do know that it was a new writer. Um, but yeah, no, good, good, uh, good, good writing. If you happen to be watching this, whoever you are. Yeah, actually, now that I think about it, we technically have one Luna episode per season. Um, well, yeah. kind of. We have, uh, you know, the uh, intro, the the two parter intro for uh, season one, which is yeah. kind of Luna slash Nightmare Moon. Uh, then we have Luna Eclipse, and now we have Sleepless in Ponyville. You know, it seems she she always gets I one. I will be right back. Okay. Yeah. Everybody gets uh, one. Everybody gets one. Uh, so that just leaves you and me, Lightning. Brilliant. Anyway, God, I hate Cabral so much. Just I know. Oh, I, it's just, yeah, it's just terrible. I mean, honestly. <laughs> working with him has been a nightmare. Yeah. I mean, anyway. It's definitely not like this to be recorded and he can listen to it back later. Or that he's our boss, or that, you know... Someone's our boss, I don't even know. No, no one's the boss of us. Yeah, that's right, we're, we're the boss. Yeah, we are We are the man. Yeah, we are. The... We are the men. <laughs> Which joints. is kind of just an average statement, really, because we are, but... I guess so, I mean, like... Um, yeah, I mean, we, we, we are... Individually, fairly man esque. Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> man esque. <laughs> we are the man eskiest men. Okay. We're the man eskiest men there ever was. The most man eskiest men that ever man esked. I can't believe we've all gone for five seconds and we've already evolved into man eskiest men. The man eskiest men. The, what, what is that? Man-esquist. We're kind of man-esque. But we're more man-esque than some people. Uh, yes, we are. We are a level on the scale of man uh, There are men. There are the, are the man-men. Are the yeah. Scale. And at the bottom of the scale, there are the, uh, I don't know, the, the not particularly man-womanly man. <laughs> Wait, what are we talking about? So and we're very good. man-esque, so we're at the top, or we're, are we we're, in the middle? We're upper middle. Upper Wait. middle, that's the okay. case. Wait, what? Where's AR on the um, whole man-esque scale? Man-esque, uh, what? How what is this now? You know, he's not the man as much as we are, but... Yeah, Wait, what is he, this? You're is just this middle. Is just because I'm Californian? Yeah, uh, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. You see, it's, it's, it's degrees of England... Uh, Lightning is English. I'm New English. You're Californian. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't really equate, but oh racist. What? Well. <laughs> California is not a race. It is too. It is now. It is now. Anyway, what have I missed? Uh, uh, yes, that's pretty much. Yeah, you've missed the scale of manesque. How did you get on this topic from Sleepless in Ponyville? A way that you How did find we get on this topic? Episode. 
You'll have to watch this episode back and like see I how we did it. I ain't watching this for fifty minutes. I don't know who's still watching this well, fifty minutes. Use in. the skip button then. I don't know. You're a skip button. Well, I'm assuming that when we actually post this, there's going to be we're going to have different uh, sections that you can uh, like click on the little uh, timestamps and yeah. do it. You can do that with YouTube. Yeah, so don't um, blur the topics, because otherwise it's difficult, okay? Wait, there's topics this? Of it I thought is. we just talked. I didn't really think there were topics. We're doing episode well, in by this episode. one, there's no topics. Well, yeah, there is. Actually, yeah. There's going to be a lot of... Actually, we do it episode by episode. There's going to be a lot of timestamps. Oh, well. I know. Uh, anyway. Good luck with that, Lightning. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, oh. Mr. Editor. Um, Anyway, so after uh, Slippers and Ponyville, I think we had uh, Spike at your service? No, Wonderbolt Academy, which was one of my favorites for a long while. Yes, oh, yeah. you, you are a Rainbow Dash fan, are you not? Yes, I am. Rainbow Dash is still my favorite ever since I first saw her. More than her. is in it. She's like wearing a uniform and it's quite cool. This is very true as well. Um, what about Academy was very, I, I personally did like it because you, for one, do get to see Rainbow Dash go to Wonder World Training. Everyone's been waiting for that. I do feel Pinky was a little over the top. That was just me. Other people disagree, and I agree with them, but I also disagree at the same time, so I'm indifferent again. And, um, I did like seeing that. I do love the, you had the blimp coming oh. down, my little pony, my little pony, and then a giant hurricane tornado comes and destroys the blimp. Bloom. Yeah. yeah. How, what, what did you guys think about uh, Lightning Dust? Well, I drew a picture of her. Okay. Here it is. You, got, well, you, okay. you guys can look at my horrible drawing of her. Lightning but... For the benefit okay. of the court, AR will link it to us. Um, but yes, I All thought right, well. Lightning Dust was kind of... Was that a name, Lightning yeah, Dust? Yeah, it was Lightning was Dust. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought she was an alright character, I guess. I was kind of, like, I don't know. It was a while since I saw the episode. She was very, sort of, she was like Rainbow Dash, yeah. but in a negative well, that's way. Kind of why I liked because her she too. was overly, like, yeah, I, I think... no, but she was doing stupid things, like, endangering things for no real reason. You, it seemed. Yeah. But she was also correct at the same time. They did need the training, and you do realize that a tornado is just a bunch of wind. To be fair, she was right in that, though I would say that she was horribly endangering, you know, her other cadets, pretty much just for her own self and uh, grandizement. And, you know, I heard a number of people yeah. go like, oh, well, you know, in the military, they actually would have, you know, rewarded her for this because, you know, she was clearly doing really well. And, you know, like everyone else was just being stupid for not, you know, for like getting in the range of an active fire yeah. zone or something. It's like the thing is, yeah. no. No, they, it wasn't that the, the main six, you know, accidentally flew into a live fire range. It's that she was doing something stupidly dangerous without proper guidance, pretty much yeah. just to impress. Uh, and that's the type of thing that they do not encourage in the military. It's true. Yeah. That, that, that is, you know, that's the type of thing they do not want you doing. Hmm. That's what I'm uh, saying. Like, in the military, they don't, like, they might reward you for excelling, but they won't reward you if you, like, run head on at enemy lines on your own because you think you can tank it or it's, something it's like me and, Halo and you want 4. to impress everyone it's like me in Halo 4 I do that too often I'm like I can take them I'll kill three enemies and die by the fourth one well, yeah, I really exactly. like your uh, your picture of uh, lightning dust pooping lightning it's, um, <laughs> it needs to be is that what's happening here? it needs to be in color <laughs> I know that's not, that's not what it's actually supposed to be but that's what it looks like and it's yeah. actually a really good drawing yeah I do um, like that yeah yeah, though here's the thing. Actually, uh, the thing I kind of heard about uh, Lightning Dust, and I after hearing this, it actually made me like the, well, not necessarily like the character a lot more, but like why they added the character a lot more uh, was Lightning Dust is essentially Rainbow Dash in her worst episodes. Oh, uh, you yeah. know, she is essentially the Rainbow Dash from Mare Duel, or uh, you know, I, I, I can't remember. There's like one other one. She's but, what like, Rainbow Dash could be. Yeah, it's mm. Rainbow Dash in the hands of a bad writer. Um, yeah. And ironically, yeah. it was actually the, the author of uh, both uh, Mare Duel and one of the other not-so-stellar Rainbow Dash episodes wrote this one. And a lot of people can't point out the fact that, yeah, she's essentially you know kind of showing Lightning Dust as being the Rainbow Dash, you know, like a, a badly handled Rainbow Dash and, you know, kind of why that's why it's not a good character for her. Um. 
Although yeah. I do find it interesting <laughs> also with uh, Lightning Dash herself is that she wants to become Wonder Bowl as well, which is why people like that with Lightning Dash, but she doesn't get to become Wonder Bolt at all. So you have a whole new character with the little side story that people have been making where she's like, I just trading so hard and and I just failed and such. To be fair, yeah. it isn't actually, you know, stated that she's drummed out entirely, just that she's, you know, got her uh you know, flight privileges temporarily they revoked took her, and is no took my wings. Yeah. <laughs> I would like, say actually Sorry, just but on the subject of like Thanks. Rainbow Dash be, becoming, she was like became the flight leader or whatever it was. She got the gold badge, and she got into the Wonderbots Academy. Why haven't we seen anything else of it? I know that the season's been fairly short, but you know, considering there was this whole thing in the first two seasons where she was, was really wanting to become a Wonderbolt. Yeah, it's never actually come up again. Yeah, though. that's true. But it was like, only the, because you know, if you recall the episode, she said, "See you guys in a week." It only lasted a week. Yeah, it only lasts a week, but you would have thought, like, you know, there you know, might have been some sort of well, follow-up. Well, she does have the yeah. bag still, so... I, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess maybe um, they're going to deal with it in Season 4. Again, this actually ties in a little bit with what we were talking about last time with them possibly trying to wrap up the, the series with 3, essentially going, like, okay, here's how we can make sure that people... that if we end it, Rainbow Dash's story about trying to get into the Wonderbolts is wrapped up, but also not in a way so that uh, in a way that we lose the ability to do Wonderbolt stories uh, involving Rainbow Dash later on uh, by just saying, okay, she's now part of them. It's you know she either has to leave the yeah. cast or she's you know now just a member and she doesn't try to get in anymore. Yeah. Uh, so you know that's it true. slightly cop outish, but it's understandable for if that's what they were trying to do. I can kind of understand it. Yeah, but, uh, I I still personally enjoyed this episode. I did like seeing flying. I do love their um, stories with anything involving with the Pegasi and flight. I, I really just enjoy those personally. They yeah. have some pretty cool stuff with the Pegasi. Plus, they have some awesome guitar riffs overall. They do. They're the ones that get all the cool guitar of riffs. Course. Well, naturally, the mm. actually this, this ties into sort of an idea I've had for a little while, which is uh, that. Uh, if you look at the original characters, uh, you know, originally Fluttershy was going to be an Earth Pony and, uh, you know, surprise Pinkie Pie was going to be a uh, Pegasi. And if you look at those original sketches, it actually kind of seems like they were kind of going with a thematic thing for each of the uh, the pony species. Essentially, uh, you know, the Earth Ponies were both down to earth, uh, you know, farmer and care- animal caretaker. Uh, so they're sort of the blue collar, down to earthy, you know, type personalities. Uh, the mm. uh, you know the the Pegasi were both uh, very upbeat, very fast paced, very uh, you know uh, exuberant uh, and excitable and athletic. You know, with uh, Pinky, these essentially Pinky and Rainbow Dash, and then the unicorns represent kind of the more white collar, creative types. Yeah. With Twilight as an academic and Rarity as a you know artist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I can understand that. I think it's good then, in a way, how they mixed it up a bit, having Fluttershy as the caretaker. Yeah, fit. yeah. no, I, I think it was a good call. Yep, indeed. But we yeah. should probably move on to a new that episode before we go another hour and a half like the last time. <laughs> Lordy, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I think we have two more we haven't talked about yet, and those would be Spike at your service and just for sidekicks. Well, n- no, you forgot Raise This Barn. Oh, God, you're right. What is wrong with me to this morning? What is wrong with me? Sorry, right. okay. It's not yeah, on so, form. <laughs> yeah, I am, I am just all over the place. Hold on, so was um, Apple Family Reunion before Spike yes. Service? Okay, so I wasn't off about those two being back-to-back. But anyway, Raise This Barn. Applejack song. I like that song. Applejack song. A lot of people were really waiting for this episode. There was a lot of the whole, you know, Applejack is a background pony uh, Applejack never gets her own episode. Applejack doesn't get her own song. I said that about Rainbow yeah. Dash, and people laughed. Yeah, the, <laughs> dude. Well, she doesn't get her own song, but she has lots of episodes. Yeah. And of course, yeah. now uh, Rarity hasn't gotten an episode since uh, 2011. <laughs> but <laughs> oh god, that was a long time ago, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was. I knew you back in 2011. Oh, Lightning? What? Yes. Wait, did I? Yes. No, I knew you back in 2012. Yes. 
not only does it hurt because I love uh, Rarity, I think Rarity's awesome, but also Rarity has like some of my favorite episodes. Like the Rarity, I've never disliked a Rarity centric episode, and we have not got one. And Rarity's just this hilarious is, too. Yeah, disappointing. But anyway, Racist Barn and Apple Family <laughs> Reunion. We get a return of Babs, which was actually kind of cool seeing her come back in the same uh, which season. Which she's taller than Apple Blue. Mm. She is. Uh, yeah. She's a larger pony. She's fat. She is fat. I don't think fat makes you taller, though, does yes, it? Yes, it does. You have more fat on the bottom of your hooves. Therefore, it adds it in inches of height. <laughs> you're, gr- you're growing it on your legs, like, underneath <laughs> Ponies just grow fat on, the, uh, on their chins, bellies, and the bottom of their hooves. Yeah. Your logic is, as always, incredibly sound. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Of course. Well, um, yes, but you guys enjoyed, uh, you know, uh, Apple Family Reunion? Yes. Chance for Applejack to show her quality? Yeah, mm-hmm. that was definitely good. I, yeah, I quite liked it. Um, it's, it was a, hmm, it wasn't one of my favorite episodes. It was a good kind of just like a, average episode. It's like Applejack in general. It's good. That's about it. <laughs> Good. I will say I, Not the best. I will say that Granny Smith and her cousins, I love them. The old ponies, I love them so much. I don't know why. Yeah. I've always enjoyed old people like that where they mess with each other and just cackle and laugh. My my mom's sister has a cackle for a laugh. It's hilarious. Oh god. <laughs> and enough, she's five know. foot it, one it, to make things better. <laughs> And then there's my mom's other sister, who's four foot eleven. Wow. We're, yeah, we're pretty short. I'm actually five ten, so I'm average height for the human race. Uh, uh, yeah. I tower over you, tiny person. I'm average height for the human race. What's your height then, Dad? Uh, just over six one. Yeah, you're about the same size as my dad. I'm five eleven. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's weird. Most of the people I've met in Maine or in, in New England in general actually tend to be. Uh, somewhere in the six range. Uh, I don't want to go to Maine now because I'll be sure in comparison. I'd like you to go to California. It's much better. Right? It's, it's it's a beautiful state, and unlike stupid California, we're not jerks who like to the little other people's states. Yeah, well, I think we can all agree in that respect then that England is best because it doesn't have any states for you to belittle. <laughs> to be, all right. To be fair, I will say that I love England. I've actually visited there a couple of times. I love your country. I'd love to live in your country. You do have England doesn't have states, but you are part of the UK, which is you know in- includes Ireland and Scotland, both of which have certain uh, you know. Yeah, it's mainly Ireland. Scotland isn't too bad. It's it's Ireland. Yeah, well, well Scotland's uh, possibly going to pass a referendum to try and uh, create an independent state. I know, but they're forgetting we still own them. <laughs> I mean, uh... <laughs> there go our Scottish fans. <laughs> um, we we don't know this lightning person. He just wandered into the chat one day. <laughs> He's not. What have you done with the real lightning? He doesn't normally insult. Are you wearing that? This you know, is like my clone shirt. To, to be it's fair, actually, that that I'm related to Scottish and Irish people, and I'm just like yeah. saying stuff like that. Okay, that yeah. I, I personally, I love your country as well, Lightning, but I personally do love the United States for its beautiful land. It's it, We have so much beautiful scenery here. So do we. It's just in, in the form of, like, rolling you know, hills, yeah, not giant uh, you mountains. You have cliff faces, rolling hills, and some nice valleys, but over here we have everything p- times five of what you have. Well, to oh, be fair, thanks. if you were going for mass, like, if you're, if you're doing comparative mass, Europe... My uh, state is bigger has... than his country. Well, yes. Yeah, to be fair, my state is bigger than his Wait, country, but a lot of places are bigger than our country. Maine is one huge, and two, England is not very large. That's true. Uh, yeah. You know the the thing is, uh, Europe. You know, I, I, this is actually you know an important point to remember. Europe is made up of many, many, many countries that have been established over years of diplomacy and war. Yep. America, the U.S. is the result of first once yeah you know, a bunch of superpowers coming in wiping everyone out who had set up those you know carefully aligned boundaries uh, created by diplomacy and war, and then another country coming in 
and killing all those people, you know, killing some of those people and taking over the entire master themselves. Yep. <clears throat> so to be yeah. fair, we have a lot more space, but mostly just because we killed everyone and said this is all one country now. Yeah, basically. We yeah. kept most of we kept some of them alive. I mean, I am Cherokee, so partially. True, true. But, but mm. it's like you know, it's kind of hard to argue, oh, we have the most beautiful territory. Uh, I can since, say that. I'm Native you know. American. Okay. True. Okay. Apart from you. <laughs> anyway, I, I do love the American landmass personally. It it is quite yeah. lovely. Yeah, I found out actually that we have more counties than there are states in America. Apparently, just that doesn't surprise me. We have more, got like seventy five. We have more counties like, in counties. California than we have states. We have fifty three <laughs> counties in my state. That's yeah, sad. exactly. But I mean, for England, that's quite a big thing because, like, counties are the biggest thing that we actually have. If you don't count the yeah. countries being split up, yeah, that's fair. Or the uh, constituent countries, or whatever the hell. But, but yeah, um, I'm kind of glad we actually did talk a little about country because I mean, it is part of our picture on the for end to end. Yeah, yeah that, that's true. Assuming it doesn't get changed when we hand it off to the vector artist. Um, yeah, th- there should be a big picture of England that Lightning Rabbit is sitting under. Yeah. Yeah, just in case anyone was in any doubt that I lived in England. <laughs> they they could have told me you're Scottish. That, wait, it's not Scottish. <laughs> what? Scottish yes, accent, you yeah. Have I've a definitely Scottish got all of those. <laughs> you could tell from his deep brood. If you can tell yeah. by my character sitting underneath California and the rest of the U.S., I'm from California. <laughs> mm. and in case you can you tell, tell from, from the South London and accent. You, if you can tell, Duhat is from the Atlantic Ocean, so... Yes, the Atlantic Ocean and that one state that everyone seems to like insult. Well, actually, I think everyone just forgets about it, really. I genuinely, like, no offense to Maine, but I did forget for a little while that it was a state. I think that's that's what the issue is. It's not that I make fun of it. I mean, yeah, it's fun, but overall, you just kind of forget about it because it's, like, off in the furthest corner of the country. It's not that I'm insulting you. It's just that you're really forgettable. <laughs> that is a serious it's issue. It's not that you suck. It's just that nobody cares. <laughs> there you go. You're like Rhode Island. I'm sure... Oh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, sure God. Maine is a very nice place. Uh, I can't say I've been there myself because I've only left the country like once or twice. Isn't that like Scotland? No, that's the same country. Well, it's the same set of countries, so it's fine. Okay. Yeah, all one country. I mean, when I left the mainland of the UK... It's I not really mainland Cyprus, of the UK. That was about it. How's Cyprus? Yeah, it is. It's all joined together. Okay. Well, what about Ireland? I mean, Ireland's technically... Ireland doesn't count. We only own the top of it. and <laughs> we're, we're still trying to get the bottom half, half of page. it. Just give us time. <laughs> Yeah, they don't even oh, care God. much about the bottom half anymore. They just want to hurt us all the time. I mean, oh God, I have I have so many. Uh, it's actually kind of like I have one Irish friend who doesn't like Northern Ireland. Sorry, no, I have one Irish friend who's Northern Irish and hates Southern Ireland, and I have a whole bunch of American friends who have no actual connection to Ireland at all, who despise those dirty English people for taking over pure, innocent, virginal. Ireland. Virgin? Oh, what? yeah. Innocent? Perfect. Innocent? Yeah, so so pure and innocent that it was the home of the IRA that bombed, like, civilian targets all across they, England. They yeah. the IRA as being basically just so, a bit extreme. I like the English. I like yeah. every... I, a bit extreme. The only country I really don't like is the French. It's... I know, but not many people do. I hate to say it. I mean, okay, I don't particularly like most of them, but I do have them. It's a little bit well, of I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's not a thing to be sorry That's for. True. Just... You insult my state. You insult my Scottish and my Scottish relatives, my French relatives. Do you want to just keep on going? Well, I can make fun of the Canadians and call you one as well, but I'm not going to go there. You want to talk to Germany or Colombia next? Do they have a I lot think of Germany's done there? enough? It's fine. We, we don't. Uh, the the we don't main talk country about I think was making fun of is the French. That, personally, that's, that's, that's just me. Yeah, that's a problem. I, I have trouble, you know, getting up a lot of national pride when it's like, yeah, most of my ancestors come from Germany. <laughs> oh. There's nothing bad happened there. I think <laughs> it'd be the same feeling for French. For the French, I mean, seriously, yeah, like no, the thing is, the, the French, the, the French, they have a very bloody like, history. Plus, the fact that they can't decide on the a, government to last for six months. 
to be fair, yeah, the, the only well. reason I think people don't like the French, particularly in England, the whole thing was that because they came and invaded us in 1066, and, I, and it was a bit like, right, we don't like you anyway, and now you've come and done this, and like loads of people in this country probably... Yeah, that, that speak, and the French don't really like the rest of the world at all. Like, blood. Oh, yeah, they're very they're pretty stuck I up. Mean, no offense to the French, but they do, yeah, like... Do the one... of our French viewers? <laughs> our so French we, viewers so like, which viewers I mean, have we insulted? No, we insulted our main viewers... Not from the well, state of I know it's not everyone in France, but I know that like from like friends who have gone like I've had loads of groups of friends go over to France, and they've said that some of them were really like snide and sort of like yeah. Oh, I mean, um, I was talking with a uh, Quiet Water Music, and he has been to France. He said he went there, and he said just glancing at their faces, they look so depressed. <laughs> mm. See, I want to go and say, like, oh, well, to be fair, I have been to France several times. I have French relatives. I have a French friend. The yeah. problem is, I don't particularly like my French relatives. I despise spending time in France because the place they live on is really uncomfortable to live in. And my one French friend, as much as I love the guy, he is a horrible anti-Semite. <laughs> and it's kind of hard to say, look at this nice guy. Isn't, isn't he an example <laughs> the French aren't really all that nasty? When he then turns around and goes, you know who I hate? The Jews. They're just <laughs> like, awful. Oh, God. that's horrible. <laughs> we were trying so hard to, like... No, it's not... uh, anyway. Again, sorry, French French viewers. We, um... we, I'm sorry, French viewers, but we just don't like you. No. <laughs> no, that was horrible. Oh, we're losing... End-to-end, end, condoning... <laughs> <country life. laughs> um, hey, ponies! So, ponies, yeah. and, um, spike at your service. Yeah, about uh, that. Uh... <laughs> like how do we get on now, those topics? I don't know. I love this podcast. Anyway. It's oh, well, it's world history. It's world history. No, it's us hating countries. <laughs> Mostly the French. But um, anyway, yeah, Spike at Your yeah. Service. Spike at Your Service, um, I did enjoy because it was the first Spike episode of Season 3. Um, yes. Zuhad, you're getting uh, me quiet on your microphone, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. I was actually talking quieter. Yeah, sorry. Were whispering. Oh, okay. He was whispering to us, can you hear me now? Sort of thing. But um, I, I was... it was the first Spike episode of Season 3. It was quite enjoyable. I did like the new animation style with the Timberwolves. It was a very nice twist from when we first saw them. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. I like that. Um, those, it, it was interesting. A lot of people were not big on the, on the uh, use of CG. I thought it was actually kind of nifty. Um, I don't know if it meshed amazingly well, uh-huh. but the level of detail that they managed to accomplish using CG uh, to do those incredibly detailed, uh, you know, Timberwolf models. Yeah. Worth- yes. I, di- I didn't actually realize like until afterwards when someone said it's CG, and I was like, "What? Really? I didn't understand like how they could implement it or anything, and I didn't know that they'd yeah. done it." And once I knew that they'd done it, I was perfectly fine with it. This, yeah. this episode actually wanted me to see more of the Everfree Forest because there is so much stuff that they can cover in there, personally. I, I just would like to see what else they can come up with that would be in there. Yeah, actually, I yeah. really uh, enjoyed both this one and uh, the last one, uh, Apple Family Reunion, because for too long, our uh, our games from this fandom have had a grand total of, like, one basic enemy type, and that's parasprites. Mm. Like we always get parasprites, and you know, occasionally changelings. Now, not only do we have the Timberwolves back, and Which, you know, yeah. in in the present, but we also have the Super Timberwolf <laughs> and yeah. multiple flavors of fruit bats. It was like Power Rangers. It just kind of combined <laughs> like to make Power one giant one. Actually, it was funny. My dad walked in when we were watching the Milo Pony episode with my cousin Kylie when I was on a marathon with my sister and my 10-year-old cousin, as I mentioned earlier. But um, we watched that episode, and my dad walked by, and he heard them use Timberwolves, and he laughed. He's like, I get it. <laughs> uh, it's a fun. Yeah, but... Um, uh, yeah, actually, the other thing is, uh, do, you, do you notice that the, the King Timberwolf... Had like a crown? Wolf, like the, the super wolf. Yeah, had a little I crown. That. Yeah, it, I did. It, it made me, uh, made me think of I didn't actually birds. see that, no. <laughs> You're so oblivious, yeah, no, he has lightning. A, he has a little wooden crown I, on top of his head. I wasn't paying much attention because I was more worried about the fact that there was a giant <laughs> thing and attack some of the characters. That's fair. And I that's, didn't that's see that good. it had a crown. Which also, that's good. how did AJ get stuck? 
Um, yeah, it was one very small rock. Yeah, I remember, right? with the strength of her oh, legs. Oops. Yeah. Now, if it, you know, if she had been covered in like half her body's covered in rocks, I can understand that. Yeah, for the benefit of the court, I'm going to be throwing in a uh, picture here. No, I'm not throwing in a gavel. <laughs> just chuck a gavel. At <laughs> I would love that. Cat, oh, what? Uh! You just brought that. You just brought that mm. picture up again, and my God, I forgot how unstuck she looked in that. Yeah, Where, she I, didn't I, look for some reason, Yeah, for some reason, I remember it's like a rock having fallen over yeah. her leg. It, it just looks like she sort of stuck her foot in there, and she's like, oh, up. Oh. <laughs> so this picture is showing right Ow. now to them, right? Okay. Yes. Good. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, um... Yeah, for the strongest character in the show, she's... That's, that... That's, that's There's pathetic. a rock on my hoof. Like I, I could maybe buy that if it was like Rarity. If Rarity got yeah. her foot, her hoof stuck like that, and, and I was like, oh, it's terrible. I can't move. I mean, but, Rarity know, actually I, got stuck that. on her massive boulder with just one feather. True. But that's not understandable because if, well, you, if, you, if you ever have a feather torn out, it hurts. Um. Oh, and you'd be a. <laughs> Someone who's up yes, on those. Yes, I, I would be. Facts, I, would I am a Pegasi, clearly. Clearly. But, yeah, I would say that... The thing is, though, that it's very difficult to convey someone getting stuck because if you actually get trapped between boulders, like Rainbow Dash and Applejack, it's more than likely in the real world that you'll be severely crushed by it, and they can't do that in this show. So they had to kind of do... not. Like, a, it wasn't a pathetic attempt, but, you know, it doesn't look like she's stuck. It looks like she's got a very small rock on her leg. Yes. Well, I'm pretty sure she's kicked things uh, bigger than that. it's one of those moments where you get, like, you know, where you're walking, like, you're hiking or something, your shoe gets caught in between some rocks? Yeah. I, I think that's what they were going for, but it's just, visually speaking, it, it, it's like this. Um, Do you remember, uh, you know, I'm assuming you've all seen the, uh, the Indiana Jones no. movie, the... Uh, Oh, you didn't see uh, uh, King of the Crystal no, Skull? Have, sadly. Oh, the yeah, Crystal Skull. I didn't like the Crystal Skull, skull one. Yeah, no, no one particularly did. But you remember the, the iconic uh, or infamous uh, fridge scene? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, he, he survives because of the blast in the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> turns out, turns out, some people did uh, crunch the numbers. You, uh, that actually was plausible. Um, it is possible to survive, you know, to, for him to have survived uh, in that fridge. But it's just because it is plausible. Doesn't mean it can happen. No, it's not that. It's the thing. It's, it could happen. But just because it's plausible, just because it could happen, just because you can hand wave it and say it actually doesn't break physics, it hmm. breaks the audience's suspension of disbelief. And that's what the problem is with this. Uh, the scene with Applejack is it could happen, but it doesn't look like it could happen. And so even if it could, yeah. you've broken the audience's suspension of disbelief. That scene hmm. and. You know, you, that that hurts. That hurts your uh, that hurts your episode. Hurts your movie. Yeah, I would actually say though on that subject, the thing with surviving <laughs> inside the fridge though, I don't think he would have come out in such yeah. a pristine Harrison condition. No, he, he... Yeah. And that's what I'm saying though. Like Applejack, like in real life, if she'd had if her she leg crushed by a giant rock. Oh, oh my god, god, a giant rock. rock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, what I was thinking about, like, she wouldn't have been able to just get up and walk away from it. I know she was kind of, like, checking out the leg afterwards, but, you know, if a real horse gets its leg crushed by a rock, it's not going to be walking around anywhere very quickly. It has three other legs. It'll be fine. Be horse... <laughs> it's got three other legs. Yeah, but they're so, like, delicate, though. Like, you know, they have to be put down if they break, or they used to have to be put down if they broke just one leg. Yeah. Thank God that is not how the the, the hospitals work in the series. <laughs> well, you broke yeah. your leg out. That'll be Jack. terrible. You know what this just means. Go in no. There. Oh, there's going to be so many fan fictions. <laughs> Get to work, people. <laughs> Rainbow <laughs> Dash wouldn't be around. She wouldn't be around since season, episode since season in that one. Case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, like, Rainbow Dash had a feather trapped under a rock, and she had to ride back to uh, the finish sure. line. Uh, Which that turtle is a miracle doctor. I mean, yeah. seriously, he just fixed her up. Yeah, was, pretty much. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I know you're quoting uh, uh, Captain Hook. Uh, sorry, yeah. uh, Captain Hook the Biker Gorilla. 
The Secret Rainbow Secret Factory. Secret Rainbow Factory. <laughs> and I locked myself in the bathroom. But, yes, no. Go away, the bathroom is occupied. One episode, folks. One more episode. <laughs> We're getting there. We can do it. So, my personal We're not favorite done episode yet. of the season. Game Ponies what? Play. Oh my god, you're right. What is wrong with me? Wait, no, we actually were on... Okay, so two more episodes. First, the episode... Just for Sidekicks? Oh, God, what is wrong? Just for Sidekicks. Love that episode. Favorite episode of the season. Very funny. Great. Good Spike well episode. Written. I loved Angel. Yeah, Gummy. A... Gummy is amazing. Uh, Cabral's... Every single picture Cabral has uh, that change regularly for his avatar <laughs> are always Gummy. It's always Gummy something. <laughs> just yeah. just agrees. But uh, Lightning, what did true. you think of the episode? Uh, which one are we on now? Sidekicks. Sorry. Just for sidekicks. Just for sidekicks. It was a all right episode. I quite liked the way they tied that it in with nice the next feature, episode. I, like I thought that was clever how they did that. Um, I know some people were saying that they wasted time when they could have been. Um, like explaining the episode and developing it more, but I think it was quite nice to see them do that because I've seen quite a few series that have had that sort of tying in with something else, uh, and I thought that was quite an a like clever that. thing for them to do. Yeah, that did. Honestly, it wasn't for the fact that the uh, the um, yeah they actually did do the uh, Games of Ponies play episode. I actually would have called this episode uh, for all these people who are uh, fans of Joss Whedon. This would be. Uh, the Buffy episode, The Zeppo, which is an episode entirely devoted to one of the, by the least uh, directly important main member of the cast, going on an adventure while the main cast, well, the, most, the rest of the main characters all deal with a giant apocalyptic uh, you know, scenario that we never actually see in its entirety. We only ever see it from the perspective of the one character who's doing something totally different through the entire... Uh, yeah, it's kind of like that one episode of Fairly Odd Parents. You and, had Chester and AJ as news reporters, and then uh, Jimmy Turner started getting popular, and they're uh, trying, and they're all stalking him, trying to figure out what's going on. And they think he replaces real parents with um, uh, fake parents, and he inherited the internet. I see. Well, the, the, right. the point the point is that it's a really interesting look at uh, following, yeah, you know, both the Zeppo and uh, Spike at your service. Oh, sorry, no, that's uh, right. Uh, Can you play? What, what was the name of this episode? No, the one just that we're on that right now, the like, just for sidekicks. Thank you. <laughs> um, the thing I like about both of those episodes, and uh, the reason I really like just for sidekicks, is it's a great way of looking at a character who usually kind of gets left behind. Uh, you know, if you look at most of the adventure episodes, uh, unless they're directly focused on Spike, generally the order of operations is go to Canterlot, get orders from the princess, go back touch base with Spike or, you know, ha- uh, touch base with Spike before they leave and then leave Spike at home to do whatever while <laughs> the rest of the characters go and do things and then Spike shows up right yeah. at the end. It's just like... Take a letter. Take yeah, a letter. It's like, you kind of have to ask, what does Spike do during all this? I actually, you know, had a... The, the, the fan fiction that I started writing that I never actually finished was pretty much all about this. All about the idea of you know Spike always gets left behind and never really has any impact on the finales or openers. Uh, but the thing is, I partly stopped writing it because uh, just for sidekicks, pretty much is the episode that does that. It is what Spike does when the other characters are not around. Yeah, and it was a very like comical episode and well written. I think it was the second episode because this is the writer for Sleepless in Ponyville. I believe this was his second episode that he wrote. Her second, uh, her, episode, her second episode, I believe. Also, um, yes. going back to Spike and Service real quick, I love the fact that we found out the blimp is actually owned by some pony. That was a, oh, yeah, that was a major oh, yeah. thing for me. Like, someone owns that blimp? I'm like, I was wondering the entire time, where does it say and who owns it? That was a thing for me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, congratulations. Barry Punch is now officially <laughs> actually, the, uh, the proud owner of a blimp. What? It was. It, she was had the, yeah, yeah, it was the helmet and the goggles. Yeah, it it might have been very much. Oh, did she have? Was it pink yeah, with it, it yellow was hair? Very punch with yellow hair and the cherry cutie mark. Wait, yeah, that's not very punch. Then, very very punch has pinkish oh, purple wait, hair. Yeah, right. No, you're right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's not very punch. It was 
the I don't know who the pony is, though. Part. I don't like know. The, the, yeah. Pink yellow mane. On a slight footnote, um, for anyone who is kind of uncertain, I don't know what he would be. We talk, well, we're talking about the balloon when we refer to it as the blimp. <laughs> I don't know why we refer to it as a blimp. <laughs> we're <but okay. laughs> calling it a blimp. Anyway, yeah. Um, then again, I don't know why anyone's still lasting this long into the recording. Yeah, to be well, fair, at this point, we're probably just talking to an empty room. Like, well, one yeah, night. at this point. Like, I'm still like walking around the corner with the yeah. uh, end to end flag. I'm here. Yeah. Hold on, like actually, 90% tell you what. of the internet is like that when you try to talk to people. True. Hold on a second. Real, real quick. Uh, for those dedicated fans who are still listening, post a comment in the comment box with this message banana if you do that you will we will know that you are a true fan who has listened to this entire thing and we will reward <laughs> you with no prize yeah actually well, we, we will might say, say your name say banana something. we will say your name in episode three free access for a year to muffin loving production what? before we have to start paying wait hold on uh, Cabral, i don't think we can promise them that we're gonna say their name in episode three because we're gonna record episode three before episode two goes up nah, we'll yeah. mention your uh, name in an episode we, we, We'll say it in one of the episodes. We won't specify which one just yet. It'll, It'll be, a be a mystery. Keep watching. Because obviously that's what every little child wants these days Going is to have their name mystery. mentioned in our podcast, which has three episodes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yes. um, so banana's the key word. Anyway, moving banana on. Spike Your Service was a great episode. Yes. I, um, we talked about that. So just for sidekicks, I love the little side story with Angel as well, how... He was such a brat, but you get to see another uh, side of Angel as well. You get to see his interaction with his true love of Fluttershy for the most part, and how she's his caretaker, and he loves her and doesn't and hates Spike with the fiery passion that burns inside his tiny beating heart of death. Yeah, I, I, mm. who would have ever thought that Angel and Spike wouldn't like each other? Huh. Just lightning. Mm. Uh, uh, uh. Who'd have guessed? Going on a ah, here we go. For the benefit of the court, I'm going to throw this picture in. I don't know why I keep saying that. This is the rightful owner of the balloon, okay. Cherry Berry. Yeah, see, there there is a point for you saying that, actually, so I can actually open my laptop and look at the picture. Yes, and if we compare it with... I don't know. There's two pictures like this, and I don't know where it's... Uh, like, what episode this is from. I don't know yeah. where those are from. Well, if we compare it to... I'm just like, this is again for the benefit of everyone else. Here is... Uh... Wait, where did you get the CMC electric picture? When was that put in? Uh, that was later. Yeah, putting a somewhat similar face, but not quite, or in a somewhat similar oh, yeah. position. Yep. Yeah, that's Berry Punch. Yeah, so yeah, right, Berry Punch has the grapes and strawberry, and not the cherries. Yeah, and she's she and she's purple, not pink. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know my my uh, my. I guess you're gonna have to take away my Brony Scholar uh, merit badge because I just messed yeah. up my yes. ponies. Yeah, that's all your fault. That's all on you. Anyway, uh, um, so moving on to Games Ponies Play, which so, was probably one of, which by the way, it probably has my favorite scene of all time for season three. Uh, when oh, Rainbow Dash uh, flew oh, and landed on the ceiling. That Rainbow was Dash brilliant. I love that. But I uh, must that, also say, yeah. this is the first roof Rainbow Dash has hit, and it did not give way. These Crystal Empire walls, uh, ceilings yeah. are really, really strong if they if Rainbow Dash cannot break through them. Yeah. Well, well you know the what they say. In what Crystal say? Empire, the <laughs> ceiling breaks you. <laughs> ah, yeah. clever. So, Crystal Empire confirmed the <laughs> equivalent of Russia. I thought it was. Uh, I thought the Crystal Empire um, was compared to Sp Canada. Uh, Stalingrad. No, it's Russia now. Yeah, no, it's it's Stal it's uh it's Russia because it was uh, ruled by a. Oh my God! It was ruled by you know like a crazy uh, dictator. Uh, oh it was God. sealed off from the rest the of the world Princess for a thousand Asia years. It was behind an iron. Yeah, behind um an iron curtain. And yeah. uh, then a new government came in, overthrew the old government, and brought down the wall that was sealing it off from the rest of Equestria. It is Russia. Yeah, MOP confirmed for 
taking into account current events or current historical events, events like Russia. Well, all right. Not quite current. Yeah, well, we now know where right. Russia does come from. That's, that's yeah. interesting. Anyway, so. No, I will say though, like the reason the window didn't break is probably because they infuse their glass with crystals, or it's just very thin crystal that you can just see through. That, yeah, I'd, I'd kind of say that's probably way, most likely. Rarity's and... expression when Rainbow Dash was lighting on the gra- glass, not grass, glass, was hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah. Though I gotta admit, Games Pony play, Games Ponies played, liked the episode, but it made me Why? sad. Because I, I knew that there wasn't going to be a rarity episode. They already said there wasn't going to be a rarity episode. But I held out hope that it would be a stealth rarity episode. That it would, you know, how like this ended up kind of being a stealth uh, yeah, dash cause... episode. I was kind of hoping it would be like rarity, Crystal Empire, again, yeah. with all the stuff in, but, uh, in Season 3. But um, this, that, yeah. know, overall, this know, was rare- still a very good episode, episode, and I really did enjoy it. The, there was some great comical relief in this episode as well. There yeah, was a, and she was had a chicken for cutie mark. See, Scootaloo, you can be a chicken and have that cutie mark. You can dream. You can dream. I think Scootaloo would throw a fit if she got her uh, cutie mark as being a coward. God, that that would not no. end prettily. It probably wouldn't. Your special, no. special talent. Oh, I don't know how to call it chicken. Scoot, scoot, loo. God. Her special um, talent is just calling chickens. <laughs> <laughs> just a chicken whisperer. Oh, that's brilliant. Teacher. And then uh, Scootaloo and Apple, sorry, uh, Apple Bloom and uh, Sweetie Belle would have their uh, kitty marks in being dictionaries. That yeah. is actually because on fandom, my, my that's icon more. is a dictionary with a picture of Sweetie Belle on the front. <laughs> you do realize this is why they don't allow like fan ideas into the show because it'd just be horrendous. There'd be OCs everywhere. Hey, They'd be, oh like, god! Oh lordy! Well, did they start like OCs into the into the show? There'd be alicorns everywhere, and everyone would be black and red. Why does everyone like alicorns <laughs> so much? I mean, I I barely understand the people who like because... being earth ponies. It's like all of those fan fictions that are self inserts where the person who writes it saves the day. It's like an alicorn is extremely powerful. And therefore, if I am one, then I can be whatever I want to be. This is why I write dark stories, so I don't have to come and save the day. Yeah. Again, this is one of the reasons why uh, pretty much any time I have an original character in one of my stories, they are almost certainly going to die. (laughs) You're so kind. Most likely, yeah, like die in it's not my fault. I just have like the more I and the thing is, the more I like my character, the more <laughs> likely they are to die. <laughs> the more I'm, they must die. Yeah, that's the thing. I love, I, I love a good death scene, and honestly, OCs kind of have to go because they cannot be canon. Yeah. Therefore, I mean, if executed properly, I'm a death scene is the best probably thing be doing possible. That with my story ashes, where I'm have following this little Griffin cub and probably going to kill him in the end. But anyway. <laughs> oh, <laughs> response to that. To be fair, the story I'm currently working on isn't going to end with the main character dying. It's just going to end with the destruction oh, yeah, of the universe. But my other anyway, story, my other not... story just twists you in the heart, just stabs you in the heart and twists the knife. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll do a fan uh, fiction episode uh, later down the line. But for right now, um, Games Ponies play. I enjoy <laughs> yes. the antics of the Mustang from Mustangia. I mean, Mustang, yes. Seriously? The best name you could come up with it's a, it's a, is Mustangia. It's a, so, Pete, how's that name coming? Oh, like, for the place where the Mustangs are from, right? Yeah, like, how's that coming? It sounds like one of those parts of your body that no one really knows about. It's, it's like, like, what is it? The Mustangian yeah. uh, muscle. The Mustangian <laughs> gland. <laughs> yes. Uh. It's like that oh, one organ. Like, co- what is it? Pete's yeah. Canal, I think it is in your body. Like who? Who named that? Oh, that looks just like Pete's Canal. Who the <laughs> hell is Pete? <laughs> Some guy called Pete just happened to name it that. It's like you know that looks a bit like a canal. And well, my name is are... Pete. So <laughs> instead of calling him, his like second name is really cool as well. It was like Doctor 
I don't know, something really like Dr. impressive, Steve. and then it's just I'm your doctor today, Doctor Steve. He named himself. He named it the doctor's first, office. Like, more name. insults right here. It was hilarious. Yeah, so my please. friend's last name is White, and they are white. Um, but anyways, they go to a hospital, and they're in Stockton, where there's a larger bit of um, the area they went to was a bit of more black demographic. But anyways, so they're the only. Um, white people in the building. It was hilarious. And this was saying it was white. And so the doctor comes out, uh, can I see a white family? <laughs> it's all black people around. And so it was just hilarious. <laughs> just incredible. Cool. And then, of course, they went broke because of American Actually, healthcare. Um, Did I say I that? About, I was about to say, at least we don't have to put uh, African Americans on the list of Actually, that is, um, it's only really for but public yeah. health care. Right. Thankfully, I don't have public health care. I use, we have private health care. I know, but that's just as expensive. Yeah, but, but in private health care actually works exactly. to benefit you. Hey, it's I know. the morning here in Maine, so can we hold on to the discussion about the uh, benefits of <laughs> privatized versus... Uh, yeah. Universal. Yeah. Anyways, game yeah, point play. Um, we got there from Pete's Canal um, in Mustang. Uh, um, so so yeah. that, that was essentially like some guys. How's that? How's that name coming, Pete? Oh, the, the Mustangs, right? Yeah. Oh, they they come from Mustang. Yeah. All right then. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't the most creative. If I was to say one negative thing, apart from you know. Uh, personal disappointment that it wasn't a rarity episode. Uh, yeah, apart from that, I really liked this episode. But if I was to say one thing I wasn't as huge a fan of, uh, as I said before with uh, Just for Sidekicks, I do really like the fact that it was a tie-in episode. I do like the fact that it was two episodes tied together. I thought the beginning was really brilliant with having, uh, you know, kind of uh, showing the opposite side Quite of the literally. conversation. Just essentially different... Yeah, like literally just showing different frames... Uh, like it showed the the scene in, with different frames, and that was actually really cool. The ending, though, uh, the ending kind of felt a little bit weird because uh, just for sidekicks starts earlier and ends later for than uh, yeah you know games ponies play. And games ponies play just sort of ends with the thing, and uh, if they were showing the episodes out of order, if they were showing them on, like, random, you know, playlists uh, for kids uh, in between seasons, which they're going to do, it's going to be kind of a weird episode because it doesn't have really... It, it kind of lacks a, you know, proper beginning, yeah. and it yeah. definitely doesn't have a proper ending. Mm. I will say that's something I hate about TV stations and things, where there's a two-part episode, and they... Yeah. Only show one of the parts. Yeah. It'll be like the first I part, or the that. second part is even worse because you don't know what happened in the first part, apart from a little synopsis at the beginning. Where you're like 15 minutes late, and you like miss the most important scenes in the whole thing, and you're like, no. It's not quite as high pitched, but yeah. Yeah, that does lead to an interesting uh, point, though. Do you think it would have actually worked better if those episodes' order was reversed? Um, if the episode, uh, if, uh, I, I personally would have liked the perspective it would have added. I mean, you're starting off with Spike; he's taking care of Petra. Like, that's interesting. Twilight leaves; yeah, the they come is, back, and Spike's under the carriage, and it ends uh, under the seats. And, and you're like, ends, what? And, yeah, and then the next episode, it begins a little bit earlier. It shows why they were going to the Crystal Empire. Yeah, yeah, I, it was going to the Crystal Empire, worked, and then it ends by finishing the story. Yeah, it works well either way, yeah. personally for me. But I think it would have been more interesting the other way around because you've been, you would have gone, wait, what? Yeah, it, it yeah. would have it would have uh, felt a little bit less like uh, games plays played had just ended abruptly, and more that it was a two parter that we had just seen the first part of. Uh, you know, I don't necessarily dislike the order they decided to go in. Um, I don't dislike it. it but... That works. Yeah, but I think it might have actually solved the problem. You know, it might have fixed the problem that uh, you know uh, games plays played had, had with its ending if it had been first, since it would have made it the first part of a two parter essentially. Yeah, yeah, that would have made more sense actually. Also, quick note for that. those uh, for those who did not notice, Derpy was in this episode. Mm. Did you know that, Lightning? Uh, yes, I. Oh well, I only know it because you told me like, a couple of seconds ago or before the podcast. Yeah, I know. I didn't know that. Did you discuss, yeah. But I, I didn't know prior to that. Uh, he'll be back in a bit. But anyways, you, you could probably show the picture, I suppose. Yeah, that's going up for the benefit of whoever. 
<laughs> whoever. Okay. Whoever's still here, you one person. Remember, banana. But <laughs> Yes. But um Yeah It's it, gonna be like loads of people so, saying banana now. Yeah. Um and then we have the finale, which we discussed last episode. I, I really think we don't need to cover this too much other than I personally did like it. The songs were great. The animation was amazing. Just a fast oh, story yeah. is all. Yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah. that's kind of to be expected because they do have to try and fit in, well, everything into twenty minutes, yeah. twenty-two minutes, and it's quite difficult. It is. Um, but let's let's go ahead and then. So we've discussed all the episodes, of season three, and our thoughts on most of the individual episodes. And um, my thoughts personally in season three, a lot of people, you know, they didn't like this season. I was a bit surprised at that. I personally really enjoyed it. It had a lot of good comical moments. It has some good story moments, too. Um, yeah. And I, I, I enjoyed it, personally. And Plus, we got a Scootaloo episode in there, and you got Applejack having her own song and own episode. You got a lot more Kedemar Crusader stuff. I love the CMC. I would love a CMC um, episode where they follow the Manhattan branch of the CMC, personally. That would, yeah, that'd be interesting. It would be. Or um, at least have the CMC go visit Manhattan to the club over there. But, um, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, it would. And I'm back, by the way. No, you're not. And oh, so, oh. <laughs> but overall, I I enjoyed this season. Um, it was enjoyable to watch, and I will be rewatching it now and again. I do have quite a few of the episodes downloaded onto my Mac. Um, not my PC. It's too slow to run HD 1080p episodes. But it's good. Bit of an endorsement for Mac there. Where, uh, it's endorsement for Mac. Get paid for that later. <laughs> um,. Anyways, yeah, so but personally, I'd probably give it a 8 or 7.5 out of 10 for this season, personally. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought it was a good season. I didn't, I was kind of, not impartial to it, but it just kind of, it was just another season. It was, like, it had its very good moments, yeah. like the finale, and particularly the Crystal Empire episode, the game of Ponies Play 1, because... You got to see more of the Crystal Empire, and it's quite a cool-looking place. Yeah, more of the equestrian universe itself. Yeah, like artistically speaking, I quite liked the Empire, but yes, the Empire. You get to see more of the rest of it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I still think season two is probably my favorite season, though. I, I, I yeah. agree with that. Um, I want more changelings, but, actually. So, I, yeah. Uh, well, if you want more changelings, plug, plug, plug. Read the um, uh, uh, comics. By uh, Katie Cook and Anna I Price. Love the Katie comics. Cook is a Mainer, by the way. She signed my first book. She signed the first issue for me. What? I have a I, I have a uh, Katie Cook signed uh, first uh, Ghost Variant edition with Fluttershy on the front. Like she oh, well. drew Fluttershy on the front for me. What? Yes. Yeah, and I have a watercolor she made. She um, lives in Maine. Has... Yes, she did a, a, a signing when the, uh, the the first thing I read. Funny thing, I wasn't even going to pick up the books, but then I saw that Portland, Oregon was going to have a sign. K Cook was going to do a signing in Portland, Oregon, and I was like, oh, I'm going to rage on this so hard because I hate Portland, Oregon for stealing our damn na- city name. Uh, mm-hmm. Portland, Maine is the city, is the largest city in Maine. Um, it's the and only I went on the thing, and someone was like, shut up. <laughs> and, I, and I went on the thing to, like, like oh, damn you, Portland, Oregon. And then someone was just like, no, actually, it's uh, Portland, Maine. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, it's, uh, it's happening at like 3 o'clock. It's like, it's 2.30. Excuse me, I need to leave now. I need to leave now. <laughs> I'll be back. Yeah, All that thought. Yeah, I was like, I, I don't even, I didn't even particularly care about the comic, but I was like, no. Psst, you know, forget you, Portland, Oregon. I'm taking advantage of this. And then I ended up absolutely loving the comics. Yeah, the comics and are, they, I love the story in the comics. We, they we, look really we good. We should really have a separate podcast for the comics, actually. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. Like, as soon as you've had a chance to... Uh, was, I'd say as soon as uh, issue four comes out, uh, we'll, which is the end of the first arc, uh, Lightning, you'll read up on all of those, and then we'll do an episode about the comics, about the first arc yeah. of the comics. If I could afford to get the um, comics and it was easily actually, available for idea. me, because they don't sell them very easy, yeah. like readily in this country. I have an idea for you, actually, Lightning, so uh, I'll talk to you about that after the podcast. Yes, yes we'll figure out something. Shady goings on it. <laughs> no, <I'm Yeah>. just... <laughs> anyway, back to season three uh, and thoughts. Anyway, season, season three, final thoughts for me. Uh, I did enjoy the season. Uh, I'm not going to give it a rating 
based on like a, just a generic uh, blank out of 10 rating since I do kind of uh, believe in the idea that everything should be you know judged relative to essentially itself. I just uh, ju- I respect, did judge it to itself. Well, yes, yeah, so, and but in that respect, I, instead of rating it as a one out of ten, as of right now, as far as I'm concerned, the seasons go two, one, three in terms of how much I enjoyed them. Three is probably my least favorite of the seasons that has come out as of right now, but like with Applejack as a char- as a member of the main six. It is my least favorite of a group of things I really, really like. But you don't like it. It's, it's not that yeah. he doesn't like it. He likes it, but the other ones are just better than this one to him. Yeah, it's yeah. just I'm holding this all to a, a standard that's high enough that, you know, <laughs> you being high very enough. good isn't good enough for it to yeah. qualify as, you know, being the best of the seasons. I'm still laughing because you said yeah. high enough. High enough. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> it all comes back to that. Okay. Yeah, lightning. I think you 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 said a little bit, but I don't think you concluded entirety on thoughts. Perhaps. I just I find it quite difficult. I'd say that in like ranking order, I'd say two, three, and one. And Same as you me. know, I say two and three and one kind of come in second place together. That's not saying either of them are bad. I'm actually saying both of them are just as good because like season one probably a little bit more so because it was the introduction to the whole thing and it was very sort of like the animation wasn't as complex as it is now but it still had a nice charm to it. Season three, the animation is massively and the music improved. Too, the music is really good in this season too. Yeah, there's been loads of music and things like that, but season two I liked primarily because you got Lunar Eclipsed and all of the really, like, not pivotal... Well, I guess they were pivotal. Yeah, all, really all of the, like, stories. Evening out the storyline, yeah, and saying what happened to everyone, and also Changelings, which were quite cool. Ah, oh, I love Changelings. They're great. I want to see more of them, because they must have made all those character models, so surely they must want to use them more than once. Yeah, actually, I mean, we sometimes got, they don't. Uh... We got Changelings and we got Discord. Did you see that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Discord came back again as well. So. Yeah, we got two for two in terms of villains from season two. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, that's like, yeah. good stuff. And yeah. that about right. does so, it. I do look forward to season four. I will say that. We all yeah. look forward to season four. Well, I think uh, I would ask you what you learned this time, but. I'd say since the entire thing was all about season three, I think we all kind of came out of this with the conclusion that season three was pretty good, but not quite season two. Yeah. Yeah. So next time, I think we might actually take the time to talk about season one a bit, but it is five o'clock in the morning in Maine. It is about two o'clock in the morning in uh, California. And it's only 9.52 in England. Yeah. For once, I am the one that's not staying up late. So, for from end to end, I have been Doohod. I have been Cabral95. And I have been Lightning Rabbit 0 and I interrupted him earlier, almost. Yes, you did. (laughs) Well, Cabral, I believe you have something that you'd like to say at the end of these little things. Yes. I feel sorry for each and every one of you who has left, and we will see you next time. See ya. Adios. Goodbye.